Hello there, Facebook family. Pastor John here. It is September 2020. What a year it's been, right? Crazy, crazy times. Um, can you imagine... Let's go back to the year 2000, or even a little bit further back. Let's go back to the year 1970, okay? And if I were to read these, this list of things, um, you'd be pretty uh, mystified. Like, what are you talking about? What These things would never happen. But listen to these things that are happening in this year 2020. Defund police departments. Have mayors approve of looting and rioting. Um, a prolific occurrence of children being shot and killed. Human sex trafficking. Um, Legalization of drugs. Um, Same-sex marriages. And I can't read my writing here. Legalized. Uh, I can't see the last one on my list, but what an unbelievable list that would be in 1970. I'll read it again if you just joined us. Defund the police, have mayors approve a violent protest, a prolific rise in the murder of children, human sex traffic trafficking, legalization of drugs, and same-sex marriages. Um, wow, the world has changed dramatically since... 1970, since 1980, 1990, it's just a rapid increase. And as I said before, we have no idea if these are the end times. But when you look at the increase in lawlessness, it just blows the mind what is happening in America today and I'm sure all around the world. And it seems like evil is winning. It seems like God is being defeated. God is getting pushed out of the picture. So I wanted to reassure us that God is still in control. God is still on the throne. And he is still a mighty fortress. He is a mighty force to be reckoned with. And the Bible says in Peter's letter that um, he's still coming back. Jesus is still coming back. And he's not slow in his return. He's not being slack. Um, but he's being merciful. He's being merciful to mankind. Um, God wants all people to repent and to get saved. But make no mistake about it, the Lord is coming back someday. And we read in Revelation that he is coming back hot and heavy, and he is coming back with a vengeance. And part of our responsibility as believers is to share the gospel, right? God has commanded us to go into all the world and to preach and teach to all nations the good news about Jesus Christ. But along with that, we have a responsibility to say, there's coming a day of judgment. There's coming a day of reckoning. And evil, even though it's allowed to prosper for now, um, God will deal with it. So today, one of the passages I want to look at is Psalm 37. And it's encouragement to the saints especially in a, in a year like 2020. It says, Fret not yourself because of evildoers. Be not envious of wrongdoers, 
because they will soon fade like the grass and wither like a green herb. Trust in the Lord and do good. Delight yourself in the Lord. Commit your way to the Lord. Trust also in him and he will act. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. And I think this is a good message for the church. Like, how are we supposed to react when we see all kinds of evil in the world like we do today? Verse 8 of Psalm 37 says, Refrain from anger and forsake wrath. Fret not yourself, it tends only to evil. So I believe that, I don't know, can we make the blanket statement that it's not our job to get all riled up and protest and scream and yell and fight these forces of evil? When I look at Psalm 37, it's a more passive approach. He says, trust in the Lord and continue to do good. Um, he says to delight yourself in the Lord. He says to be still before the Lord. And I'm sure, you know, you can look through scripture and find passages that would indicate that we need to take action but just looking at psalm 37 there's a time you know to to just be still and let god handle things so i guess it calls for wisdom right i'm thinking of ecclesiastes where it says um, there's a time for war and there's a time for peace there's a time to love there's a time to hate so maybe we shouldn't make a blanket statement where we're always just passive. Um, but in certain occasions, we just need to back off, settle down, don't be anxious, don't be fretful, but just let God handle it. Verse 12 says, The wicked plots against the righteous and gnashes his teeth at him. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he sees that his day is coming. God obviously sees absolutely everything that's going on in the world today. There's not a wicked deed that is going unnoticed. And unfortunately, for those that don't know Christ, every wicked deed will have to be paid for. And and they will have to pay for it with an eternal punishment. And that's, that's just the reality of scriptures. So that should further motivate us to spread the gospel, to share Christ with others. And you know, if we really got a hold of the reality of hell, as Pastor Chris preached on Sunday, if we really had a glimpse of eternal suffering, eternal torment, we would labor day and night doing everything that we could to share Christ, right? There would be no amount of money that would be too great to pay to, um, to bring someone to the Lord. There would be no sacrifice too great to see someone come to Christ and to be spared from an eternal, um, eternal destruction in hell. But that, again, that's the reality of it. So that should really motivate us to share Christ. Continuing on in Psalm 37, the wicked will perish. The enemies of the Lord are like the glory of the pastures. They vanish like smoke, they vanish away. The wicked borrows but does not pay back. Um, 
those that are cursed shall be cut off. Verse 36. The wicked man passes away, and behold, he was no more. Though I sought him, he could not be found. Transgressors, verse 38, shall be altogether destroyed. Um, not a very uplifting message today, but it's a sobering one. And that's why we need to read the entire Bible. Um, I think it was Jefferson who could not tolerate the depressing, the sad parts, the judgment parts of the scripture. So he tore all of them out and put what he called the love Bible, just focused on the love of God. And that would be great if that's all that was in the scriptures, but it's not. There's so much more. And part of who God is, is his judgment, his um, vengeance. I was just reading in Psalm 94. O Lord, God of vengeance, O God of vengeance, shine forth. Rise up, O judge of the earth. Repay the proud for what they deserve. O Lord, how long shall the wicked, how long shall the wicked exalt? They pour out their arrogant words, all the evildoers boast. They crush your people, O Lord, and afflict your heritage. They kill the widow and the sojourner and murder the fatherless, and they say the Lord does not see, the God of Jacob does not see perceive we have this confidence knowing that um, that God is in control that God sees everything every wicked deed is not escaping his notice and again that should give us a tremendous burden for those that are lost because of what awaits them but it should also give us a confidence now and a peace that, that we don't have to get all riled up at the evil that we're seeing in the world. Sure, we should absolutely vote. Uh, nothing wrong with peaceful protesting. Nothing wrong with contacting your politicians, you know, congressmen and senators, president, um, and telling them, first of all, sharing the gospel with them and telling them what you believe is the right thing to do. Uh, and obviously pray for those who are, quote, wicked, who are doing wicked things. Um, I think of the protesters. And recently I saw mug shots of those that were arrested, I think it was the ones arrested in Lancaster. And I guess everybody looks pretty sad in a mug shot, but the emptiness that I saw in their eyes, um, the hollowness on their faces, the lack of life in their countenance, I know what they did was wrong, right? Violent protest and, and looting and rioting, but, but wow, we need to have pity on them and say, God, would you reach them with the gospel as you did for me? Would you have grace on them and save their soul just like you did for me? So, um, Again, that was Psalm 37. I'd encourage you to read that if the things that you're seeing in the headlines are really riling you up um, and really causing you to be anxious. Because it, it looks like evil is winning and it looks like evil is going to overcome the good and the darkness going to be able to overcome the light, but we know that's not true. We know God wins in the end. 
I also wanted to point out a verse in Psalm 37. It says, For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. They are preserved forever. And, wow, I couldn't help but think of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 13, when it says, preserved forever. In him, you also, when you heard the word of truth, the gospel of your salvation, and believed in him, you were sealed with the promised Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance until we acquire possession of it, to the praise of his glory. That's some reassuring language right there, folks. We heard the word, which is the gospel. We believed it, and we were sealed with the Holy Spirit, who is the guarantee of our inheritance. So if you've trusted the Lord, you are guaranteed an eternal inheritance. Paul follows that up in uh, chapter 4 of Ephesians, verse 30. And do not grieve the Holy Spirit, by whom you were sealed for the day of redemption. So, child of God, rest assured, no matter what happens in the world, no matter how much turmoil and hatred is going on, how much lawlessness is happening, um, we are saved. We are God's children. There is nothing that anybody can do to unsave us. Once the Holy Spirit is within us, it's always in there. We are sealed until the day of redemption. I want to close today by reading from Revelation chapter 21. I would read this many times when I was a hospice chaplain and I was sitting at the bedside of, of a patient and I wanted to give them hope that if they knew Christ, that this is what awaited them. Um, and again, as we look at the world and we ask, what in the world is going on today? Why isn't God stepping in and doing something? Rest assured, God is still in control. Everything's going to be worked out in the end. And this is what awaits us uh, if we know the Lord. And then I saw a new heaven and a new earth. For the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down, of, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, Behold, the dwelling place of God is with man. He will dwell with them, and they will be his people, and God himself will be with them as their God. And he will wipe away every tear from their eyes, and death shall be no more, neither shall there be mourning, nor crying, nor pain any more, for the former things have passed away. I want to conclude here by reading the words to a mighty fortress is our God. And then have a little bit of time of prayer. A mighty fortress is our God, a bulwark never failing. Our helper, he amid the flood of mortal ills prevailing. For still our ancient foe doth seek to work us woe. His craft and power are great and armed with cruel hate. On earth is not his equal. Did we in our own strength confide, our striving would be losing. We're not the right man on our side, the man of God's own choosing. Dost ask who that may be? Christ Jesus, it is he. Lord Sabbath, his name, from age to age the same. And he must win the battle. And though this world with devils filled should threaten to undo us, we will not fear, for God has willed his truth to triumph through us. The prince of darkness grim, we tremble not for him. His rage we can endure, for lo, his doom is sure. One little word shall fell him. That word above all earthly powers, no thanks to them abideth. 
The spirit and the gifts are ours through him who with us sideth. Let goods and kindred go, this mortal life also. The body they may kill, God's truth abideth still. His kingdom is forever. Friends, again, don't focus on the things that are going on in this world. It'll bring you much anxiety and fear. Focus on our great God. He's still on the throne. Focus on the new heaven and the new earth. Colossians 3 tells us to set our mind on things above and not on things of the earth. So, um, so take, take heart that, that even though things are bad now, God is still in control. Let's close our time now with some prayer. Father, when we look at the headlines today, when we look at the news, we are just absolutely dumbfounded how things have changed in the last 50 years, even less than that. And Lord, it some days, to be honest, it looks like you are out of the picture that you're just taking your hands off and letting this society self-destruct. And maybe you are to some, to some extent. Maybe, maybe you're letting society see what a life without you would be like. Um, Lord, it's, it's utter foolishness of mankind to, to try to live without you. Lord, our very next breath, our very next heartbeat is dependent upon you. You, you hold our very existence in your hands. Um, so it's just utter folly for mankind to think that he doesn't need you. Lord, our world is in a world of hurt. Our country is in such a mess from top to bottom. There's so much hatred, division, and strife. God, I pray that you would reach hearts of people. Sure, there's a lot of political issues. There's a lot of social issues. But Lord, you're about the heart. You're about seeking and saving that which is lost. Lord, there's so many lost souls in our world today. Would you save them? And Lord, for those of us who are believers, uh, help us to not become hardened to those that are doing wicked. Um, help us to realize that were it not for your grace, that we too would be rebellious we too would be lawless. We would be against you and not for you. Lord, help us to show mercy. Help us to show compassion. Help us to continually lift up the lost in prayer. Keep us humble through this most crazy and unusual years, Lord. Um, and again, I pray for this upcoming presidential election in November, may your will be done, regardless of who gets elected. May there be peace in our land, Lord, and not turmoil after the election. May you protect us from all that. May you strengthen us as believers, Lord, to, to rise up in prayer and in compassion and love for those that are lost. And I pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, friends. Hey, thanks for tuning in today. Hope to see you next week. And God bless you all. Bye-bye.